hi guys welcome back to my channel it is jj and you're watching another episode of jj on demand oh my god it's been a minute but here we are sorry last week life happened and i disappeared on you guys but i am back today with another episode so i i mean i like this space to be a very positive space but also sometimes i want to be real with you guys so last week i wasn't in a space where i felt like i needed i, I was gonna be positive shooting videos i don't know i wasn't i was i wasn't in a very good space so i decided not to do any shoot and uh and that's that today it's another beautiful day that the lord has made and i thought to come here and talk to you guys about um my experience in juba south sudan most of the people who knows me they know that i have traveled quite much <laughs> in my younger years all i did was traveling oh my god i never thought i would ever settle down i i never thought that i would ever no because i felt like once you settle down like life slows down which is true life slows down but it, it, it's it's nice that i i got to travel when i was younger and i have these experiences that i can share with younger people out there anybody out there who feels like they still have a need to travel so i went to juba uh when i think i was in my rock bottom when i was going to juba because i i was i was jobless for quite some time in kenya and i went to dubai things didn't really work out really well and then i came back to kenya and i had i remember i had twenty five thousand kenya shillings by the time i knew that i wasn't going back to dubai because the plan was i was gonna come to kenya and then go back to dubai so i was in this mood of spending money so i spent all the money and then i get this email from the company they saying that oh the we won't be able to process your visa blah 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 to come back blah 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 so here i am with twenty five thousand kenya shillings not knowing where to start at that point there was a lot of um stories about juba south sudan on the news every channel you turned on they was always talking about juba and it's this time when people were going to juba it, they were starting to build the new country and i remember the first independence was uh, i was in juba when they celebrated their first independence now my going to juba i did not know anybody in juba my only thing is that i am seeing people talk i mean i am seeing news people talk about juba south sudan and i said ah that i might be going there and i on a monday one monday morning it was just a monday morning and i made up my mind i am going to juba so how do we go i remember okay it's gonna be complicated to explain this my sister's husband sister so my sister's sister-in-law i told her she was also visiting from she she was based in mombasa she was visiting and i was like i don't know how to how do people go to juba blah 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 and she was like okay going to when i'm going to mombasa i always, always see these uh buses when you pilot to room yeah hapo to room that's why you, you used to board a bus and she was like okay we were like okay let's go and and see uh what's the process so since it kind of subui to kind of to book i remember i went that very morning and i booked and i left that night without knowing anybody whom i am going to like i didn't even know how i was gonna start life but i was like you know what life is all about risking and yes dungu oh god i call myself my last name because at work they call me by my last name i'm so used to calling myself that okay guys god mutazoya tu ama tutazoya munisamehe every time you say majina ya baba yangu i am referring to myself so i am all about taking risks so i went and i paid i remember i paid four thousand five five hundred sasa nimebaki na twenty one thousand five hundred shillings kituingine i didn't have clothes because i had left my clothes in uh dubai because my plan was to go back so that's all i had when i went to juba jioni kafika 
nikaenda nika nilitoka kwa nyumba kama nimekula cuz i was like i have to eat cuz i am not spending no money on this trip cuz i don't know how much i'll be i need i need some money by the time i get there my friend i i i comes tulitoka hapo saine saune usiku and then tukafika i don't know i think it was naivasha like is it Naivasha? I think it was Naivasha on Akuru and they said we need to eat because from that point the next stop over is going to be Busia. What waka toka, wakaenda waka kula, I did not. And I remember the bus haikuwa imeja. So there's a guy alikuwa mekambele angu. So he was like, okay, kurudi ya You know you need, you need to eat something. God, sometimes God bless these guys for us. Sometimes you meet good people out there. And let me tell you, sometimes God align people in your life that are going to help you, you know, akisikia tumbo. Size, it's not njaya kusa kula nikienda jiu, but just that I haven't eaten lunch. So, God bless those guys for us. Because this guy comes to me and he's like, uh, if you haven't, if you don't eat, uh, the distance from Nakuru to Busia, it's like a distance. It can be a no miss school, nini, nini. So the guy goes out and he comes, he's too, uh, you know, I can watch a clerk and I watch a clerk. And then he sat next to me. We started talking. We realized we were both in a kind of the same situation. I'm not going to talk about his story here, but he was also kind of on a rock bottom. But the good thing is him, alikuwa anachukuliwa na mtu huko. Juba. He knew some lady and niya alikuwa na mchukua. Nikamwambia, you know why? Huyo mwenye na kuchukua. Huyo ni ya na kuchukua sisi what? <laughs> oh my God. God, yes. Man, if you ever get to watch this video. So, we were like, yeah, we're gonna do that. I mean, what can, what's the worst can happen? The only thing she can say is like, apana, but at least, atanisa idea to know the, to maneuver the way around. Like in PIA, the chick was like, hawakuwa meonana kutoka primary school. So, hakuwa najua, ame change adi, you know? So, we, we went, and then tukafika boda ya Uganda and um, Juba, I mean, South Sudan, and they gave, we had to pay waraga. Like, that's like a visa. My friend, by the time I got to Juba, I had 25 pounds. Nilikuwa nimetumia pisa yangu yote imeisha, kwa sabu waraga, blah, blah, everything was so expensive. I was like, nilikuwa na kitu 25 pounds by the time we got to Juba. God bless Priska, Priscilla, her name was Priscilla. We get to the bus station. Oh my God, I can't, guys, kia tumbo. Aki tumbo yangu ina guruma, wewe. Man, I need to eat. So, tukafika, uh, Kai, kulikuwa kuna ito aje? Ibu ni, I'm a remember the place, the name, Customs. Kulikuwa kuna ito Customs. Tukafika Customs. And um, we get there and these chicks come. She was a very barbary chick. And the guy is like, you know why? I never told you, but tumekuja tukiwa wawili. She was like, oh my God, I don't know how we, what we're going to do about it. My roommates might not accept, but let's go see what the roommates are going to say. So, we goes. And then, can you imagine, God works in miracle. We went, and then the owner of the place, because in Juba, you rent, you used to rent a space, and then you build your own kanyumba. You used to build your own house. Tunyumba, very simple. So, penye walikuwa wame rent, the owner used to live there. And the lady was like, no, I can, your sister can stay because she's, we she goes and this chick says she's my sister and this is my brother. And then the, the lady was like, your sister can stay, but your brother cannot stay because I have girls and I do not want my daughters to be impregnated. Yes, that's what she said. So, mimi siku wana shida. So, someone yali wana shida ni, the guy. Sasa unona ni mepata ma place ya kuka. We had to struggle to get this guy place to stay, but we did and he got a space to stay and it took him a minute to get a job but i was so lucky i went to juba i got to juba on a tuesday and on a friday i used to work as a waitress i started working in a place uh, called uh jebel the hotel's name was rock city those who knows they know i used to work at rock city hotel and I worked in a place where my boss was a cuckoo one. Alikuwa na muka, asikumoza, akia muka, kifikiria, kushoot guns. Alikuwa nafanya hizo vitu kwa zote. He was a cuckoo person, but 
my experience is it's funny it's funny that i have traveled all these places but my experiences in juba was a very very cool experience i mean i i i wouldn't change anything juba was a blessing to me i i made money and i met very cool people in juba and i i had a very good experience man i had a good experience i i loved working as a waitress but i didn't stay there for so long because now i had dropped all my cvs to these cool, cool nice places nice hotels and i did get a better you know option so nikatoka kusababu rock city was in a very reserved it's not very sad but in mbali na watu like the people that i knew I used to do, uh, they used to give you accommodation and everything. So I got myself another job at another place. Karibu sasa na hawa watu wenye tulikuwa karibu. The thing about Juba is the fact that I, I feel like, I think people were real. People really wanted to see, you know, they, people really wanted to see you prosper. Like, unkuno na watu walikuwa na lilianea. Is that a kulianea? Yeah. People were really concerned about their friends and their you you f people had unity, and that's I loved that. Like ulku no na watu na patana pale vua poko yo mama kuna mama flani aluanga na anatuziyanga mukimo and I remember she didn't like it like seeing me there because alikuwa zileza you know what I don't I have a daughter your age I don't want you to get exposed to this kind of of life people kukunywa people start drinking from morning to evening so most of the time I would go there and she would be like can you just take it away just take your food just do a career out and you could tell people were really concerned about people's welfare unlike other places where I have been to so I had a very I had a very good experience in Juba. I met cool people. I met people who really cared for their fellow Kenyan brothers and sisters. I met Ugandans who really cared for their fellow Kenyan friends. I still have like I still keep contacts with the people the friendships that I made in Juba because them people were cool. The funny part was man, Mimi and my colleague, she was a Ugandan. We used to get in trouble all the time with with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, Sudanese guys. Like, and me, me, she wanna chapwa. Her name was Tina. Like, do you know people who have bad luck? Do you know people? Who <laughs> I used to say Tina had bad luck. I remember one time we went to the market to go to Menda um, Jebel, and she was walking. Hands, I'm an assembly. I come and come with Konyuma. Yeah, I make come with Konyuma. The guy comes out of nowhere and slaps her, and she's like, and he was speaking to us in Arabic. At that point, nobody knew what the guy is talking about, and she's like, and she was this kind of person. You, know, she wasn't the kind of person who walks away. She was. She started going back and forth with the guy, and so there was a dude who was a Sudanese who had lived in Uganda, so they could understand each other. They, they spoke Luganda. And he's the one who explained to her he slapped you because it's uh, that you walking like that and you're not an old woman. We old women are the ones who are supposed to walk like that. You know, you witness these things. You witness them and you're like, oh my God. You know, like these people, they, they have a long way to go. Milk in the back. Mimi juba nilika sana without drinking milk tea. Because... I witnessed somebody and I could be maziwa kwa chupa alafu anaona maziwa yako inafaa kufika hapa hivi na iko hapa ana kunywa kunywa anaangalia I swear to god <laughs> I swear but still I loved it I don't know why but I loved life in Juba I really did I think because of the simplicity the, the, the it was just a simple life it was how can I say it I don't know. I don't know. I, I, for some reason, I loved Juba. I did. And I would want to go back and see how the place looks like now. I was there for two years. I think two and a half years. And from Juba now, I came to the U.S. And I, I would, I would want to go back there. And I, I always say, there's always that place you go to. And that's where your breakthrough happens. Mine happened in Juba. 
after I went to Juba, I had breakthroughs from left, right, and center. And by the time I was going there, I was so, I was rock bottom. Like, if you have traveled outside the country, you know, when it goes back home, a lot is expected of you. And when that doesn't happen, you feel like you're a failure. Oh, you have let your people down. So that's how I felt when I came back from Dubai. I felt like, oh my God, I have let my people down. Where am I even going to start? You don't even have money to get yourself an apartment, to get yourself, you know, your life back together. Where are you going to start looking for a job? It was difficult. It was difficult. But the, the minute I made that decision to go into Juba, that's when the breakthrough happened. And... I I always tell people if you have something you feel like in your mind like you're so positive you want to do it go ahead and do it you never know maybe that's your breakthrough because if and one more thing I never told my family that I didn't know anybody who was gonna host me because they would have said no 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 I know my, mostly I always uh, try to avoid scaring my family or making them being in a situation where they're worried so even when I was going I was like oh yeah somebody's waiting for me yeah, I have a friend of mine who's there, a job is aligned for me, so y'all don't worry, everything is, I don't know, I always feel like that, that burden, I, I don't like being a burden to my family. <sighs> Am I just brabbering here? I just, I just wanted to share that, I just wanted to share my experience in Juba, because I told you guys, we're going to be talking about life experiences, and that, that's, that's my going to Juba, it's a part of me, it's a, a part that I have made who I am today. And I like to. Sh I, w I thought I should share that with you guys. What's that one risk that you have taken, and you feel like it was worth it or it wasn't worth it? Please share with us. Leave a comment and let us know. I will be ending this video right here. And if you have not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. Psst, I can't even say the word subscribe no more. See, once you don't shoot a video once, these things before you come back to them, it takes a minute. Okay. Please, people, good people, people of good heart, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Watch my videos to the end. Like and share. Please help a girl grow the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next week. Bye.